right there. I'm a little taller than Brooks, so slightly. Good morning. Welcome back to the 43rd Ryder Cup here at Whistling Straits. We were with our good friend Tony Finau. Tony, welcome to your second career Ryder Cup. Um, you played here in 15, had a good finish, T10. Um, that was played in August. Temps were probably in the, the low 80s and such. And here we are, crisp, almost fall lake conditions, a little more of a breeze. Um, how different are those two golf courses if you can you know, take yourself back and, and also be here this week? Yeah, I, I'm trying to think back to 2015. I, I remember the golf course um, just as a whole. You know, I remember the holes, kind of what they look like, the shape of them. Um, I don't really remember how they how it played in 2015. I don't know if that's my memory. <laughs> I'm getting old, or um, so I kind of had a almost a blank canvas. I felt like you know when we had our practice last week coming out, it was nice to be out here again and see. There's there's quite a few blind shots on this golf course, so I think just seeing the lines and being confident over where you're aiming on some of those holes are very important. Um, it's still kind of the same season, I, I, I would say, um, just in that we played it in August in 15. You know, we're in late September now, so still pretty close to the same season. <laughs> so I don't remember it playing crazy different. Um, I know it's a lot cooler. I don't remember wearing a jacket right. um, when we played in 15. But, um, yeah, I, I would. my memory wasn't great of 15, just kind of remembering how the golf course played. But it's nice to have – come back to a place that I have played, have good memories from. Um, I played really nicely in 15 uh, for at least three rounds. And and, and it's, it's just fun to be back to a golf course that I've played before and have, have great memories at. All right, let's hit the ground here for some questions. We'll start front right two. Um, yeah, is this a, a more tiring week than other tournament weeks just because, you know, you just have to be more on the whole time with – you know, teammates or dinners or different obligations? Uh, I, I would say in a sense, yes, uh, because you do have to be on quite uh, quite often. But, man, it's where you want to be, though. You know, it's it's a, it's a kind of a mix of both. You know, like I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. You know, that's for sure. I'd, I wouldn't want to be at home uh, um, in the situation I was in, and, you know, maybe watching. So it's it's worth it's worth what the what the week brings. And that's, um, you know, a lot of team dinners, uh, you know, going out in, in groups, a lot of things that we're not as accustomed to on a normal week. But when you're only dealing with it for one week and it's the Ryder Cup, we're all up for it and we're all up for the challenge. And it ends up being a great time. I get to know a lot of these guys better than I know them just on a, on a normal PGA Tour week or, uh, or playing major championships, whatever it is. So just getting to know the guys, um, our wives getting to know each other better. Um, makes for good feelings all around, and um, whatever tiredness we're feeling throughout the week, um, I think gets trumped just by being here and, and participating in the Ryder Cup. All right, straight across, Rex, four. Tony, this would be, a, I guess, a four-ball-related question if you end up in one of those formats. Is there a whole specific hole out here or combination of holes where you can take advantage of your length maybe that you wouldn't do normally? Yeah, well, I think... There's a handful of holes. It just depends on the wind. You know, like if it's coming off the coast, uh, a lot of the holes are going to be playing into the wind early. So those are the holes that I think, you know, a, a someone like me can take advantage of. Um, if it's if it's a trade wind, which is coming out of the south, um, which I think it's going to be this weekend, then you're going to have to take advantage of the holes kind of along the water. Um, you know, from starting from six or yeah, six all the way down to 13, most of those holes go the same direction. So I, I would say those are the holes that you got to take advantage of because you're going to be playing those into the wind. So it's it's mostly wind dependent. I feel like uh, when it comes to length, um, my length I think is a is a good good asset to have uh, on this golf course. And I think the length of our team, um, just in general, is a great thing uh, on this golf course. Front left, Jeff. Tony, uh, Patrick Harrington was in the other day, and he, he traces a lot of Europe's success to the fact that they grow up trying to play on teams and playing different sports. You come from a background like that, playing different teams. How, how does it translate for you this week into being successful? Yeah, I think camaraderie is a big thing in team sports. 
Um, kind of having that oneness, I think, is, is a big thing. Uh, a lot of the mojo uh, of a team atmosphere, I think, is a big deal when you're playing team sports. Um, they seem to have that for some reason. And maybe that's, you know, to Podrick's point, kind of them, you know, I know football is a big, big sport there. A lot of them, you know, played football growing up and uh, a lot of team sports. But the way I look at our team is a lot of our guys have as well. And we have a great, young, hungry team. I think a lot of us play team sports growing up, myself included. But there's definitely that oneness that comes um, from being involved in team sports at some point in your life. And, and again, I think most of us have, have that type of um, experience from playing some team sports, maybe more, more so than what, what most of you guys would think. Number 20, Mark. Hey, Johnny. Um, can you speak to uh, what Strix has meant to this team and, and, and what kind of a captain he is uh, and have a follow on that? Yeah, Strix, uh, I mean, Strix has meant everything to our team as our captain. <clears throat> He's such a great leader. Um, and, I, and I say that, I think, mostly just uh, through his example. Um, he's, he's got this chill confidence to him, you know, and I think when I say that, most of you know what I'm talking about. He's not, uh, he's not, he doesn't talk a lot, um, and, you know, in our team meetings, he, he you know, hasn't uh, too much, but you can tell the energy he has for the Ryder Cup, the passion he has for it, um, just, just, about, just, just by the way he goes about his business, and he's got this quiet confidence, and, and I think that's something that we've all learned from and myself included as a player, to play under someone with that type of confidence and, um, and just the passion that he has for the Ryder Cup. You feel it. Um, this is a huge, this is a big one, I feel like, for our squad, this Ryder Cup. It's a big one for our team. Um, it's a big one for, for Strix. This is a place that he loves. Uh, Wisconsin, Whistling Straits, these are, this is his home. So uh, we've got a, a task in front of us where we have an opportunity to do something really special for our team, for our country, but especially for Strix. Uh, I think we have that in the back of our minds, and um, and we want to win this one not only for everything involved, but especially for our captain. Now, I don't think there are statistics for this, but I, I'm quite certain I think he's cried after every time he's won. <laughs> he's obviously, as you can know, is a crier. I mean, yeah. you know, as knowing how emotional he is, how much do you would you like to see him bawling his eyes out on Sunday? And and uh, and, oh, and is there just a you know you kind of addressed it a little bit there, but just how much you guys want to win for him? Because yeah, it would, it would mean the world for all of us. You know, as uh, I, I'm sure I speak for all my teammates, you know, for us to win for Strix, we wouldn't mind seeing all that emotion and sensitivity that he brings uh, to the table on Sunday evening. So um, it'll be a cool thing. We've got a tall task in front of us. We know that. We've got a great European team that we're up against. Um, but we've got, a, we've got a great, I've got a great group of 11 guys that, I, you know, that I'm going to go to battle with these next few days. And we've had some great practice sessions, gotten to know each other really well. Got a great group of young guys. As one of the older guys, it's crazy for me to say, in 2018, when I was on that team, I was one of the younger guys. And now, just a short three years later, I'm the third oldest on the team. Uh, I think it tells you where American golf is headed. We've got so much great young talent. Um, and we've got a handful of that young talent on our team already this year. So really exciting um, that that's the case. And uh, you know, our goal is not only to change the mold this year, but the history of the Ryder Cup for us, I think, means a lot to us young guys um, and to our younger guys. And, and hopefully we change the mold here moving forward, not only this Ryder Cup, but in many Ryder Cups to come. Seven on your right, Tony. So, Tony, a lot's been made of the, uh, of the crowd this week, predominantly going to be an American crowd, very, if any, Europeans. I mean, from, does that work as a positive for you? And from a European perspective, can it be a negative having you know, pretty much the whole crowd against you? From, you know, does that alter, would that alter their mindset, you think? Yeah, I mean, it, it goes both ways. I, I, I definitely love, you know, having the opportunity to play in front of our home crowd. That's something that I personally haven't had. Both of the cups I've been a part of, international teams, Ryder Cup in Paris and the President's Cup, was, which was in Melbourne, um, Australia. So I, I personally haven't had the opportunity to play in front of our crowd. So that's something that I'm really excited about. I've had, I felt the love already this week in the practice rounds. But to get out there in competition, I know it's going to be a whole different type of energy, um, from our fans, and that's something that I really look forward to. I think that's going to play um, into, a, into, our, into our favor uh, as Americans, um, just to have that energy. And momentum is a big thing in sports. That's something I know about team sports for sure. Uh, momentum is a big thing. And so the team that has the momentum, I think, early 
is uh, going to fare well, and I think it's always an I think it's always an advantage to play at home. So I think um, hopefully that plays plays well into our hands. If we're behind early, I think it still plays into our advantage because our crowd can um, kind of cheer louder or whatever the case is for uh, for for us as we play. All right, Doug, twenty four. Tony, you, you said something interesting, I thought, about this is a big one for us. And you mentioned Strick, and then you mentioned about, it seemed like about 15 other things in the course of a five-minute <laughs> monologue there. Well done. What, what stands out? Why is this, uh, outside of Strick and Wisconsin, where we are, why is this so big? Um, or or, or what, what makes it big in your mind? And kind of as a, as a reversal of that question, what would happen if you guys lost? And why would that be so crushing? Well... The change of, for me, the, the change of culture, you know, we've got a whole new team. We have a team with no scar tissue. Um, there's only a few, there's only a handful of us that has even played in a Ryder Cup. And a few of those, we have winning records. So we actually don't have guys on our team that have lost a lot in Ryder Cups. Um, so I, what, I, what I mean by this is a big one is we've got a whole new team. We've got a whole different group of young guys that are hungry you know, there, I see, you guys see six rookies, man, in this team room, I don't see any rookies. I see six, you know, I have, I see 12 guys that are confident and none of us are wide eyed and we want to win. You know, I think that's the end, at the end of the day, I, that's what I see when I'm in that locker room. I see guys beaming with confidence and, and really hungry to win. And that's, that's refreshing. And I'm not saying that I didn't see that in Paris, you know, but there's a certain feel I feel like. And that's what, the only reason I say that's a big, that this is a big one is because I think the culture of American golf is changing in that you guys have seen they were so much younger. This is the youngest team I think we've ever had by a long shot. And so I think that the culture of what we want to bring, again, not only at this Ryder Cup, but in many Ryder Cups to come, um, we've had, I think, some publicity about Americans not uh, having the camaraderie maybe that the Europeans have or not have the interest in playing in the Ryder Cup. That's not the case. You know, I don't think that's the case. Um, they've outplayed us in, in quite a few Ryder Cups, but that's the mold we want to change moving forward, and that's why I think I say this is a big one. And then for us that have been a part of the teams, the five guys I think that are on this team that were in Paris, um, it's hard to watch another team celebrate in front of you. you know, that's something that I had to do in Paris in 2018. Jordan was there, DJ, JT, and Bryson, so I think there are five of five of the twelve of us. Um, this is a big one because we don't want to experience that again. And to to experience that on their home turf, I think that was a tough one. If we were to experience that here on our home turf, where we're watching them celebrate on our home turf, I think that's going to be a hard pill to swallow. So, um, with that being said, there's that extra motivation I think, or um, extra drive to change the culture of American golf, and we have that opportunity this week. Would it be, though, Tony, a huge setback if you have this, this new culture and this young team and still don't get it done? Uh, you can look at it as a setback. You know, Brooks said it earlier. I was just, you know, standing there watching uh, his last few remarks. There's going to be a winner. There's going to be a loser um, at, the, at the end of this week. There's always going to be positives to draw from, from losing. You know, if that were the case for Americans uh, later this week, um, that's something that I've dealt with a lot in my career overcoming it, you know, adversity. That's something huge. We're going to be able to deal with that if that, if that time comes. Um, but, I, but I see a change in culture. I see a change in, in, in American teams. And starting with this week, uh, hopefully the, the culture of us um, not getting the job done at the Ryder Cup in the last handful changes this week. Thank you. Good. Hi, Tony. Just on similar sort of thing, has the captain used any sort of motivational techniques or anything that... <clears throat> you think of work this week or anticipating anything tonight that uh, to bring the team together yeah no he he hasn't really done anything like that um you know i think he's again he's got that quiet confidence to him strix has and uh i think we're all just excited for the opportunity we have in front of us it's such a special week on so many different levels we get to represent our country so many great people in the game of golf on uh, the pga of america i mean there's so many great um great things and people that we're representing this week. Um, just to have that opportunity, I think, is really exciting for all of us. I don't, you know, I don't anticipate any, any you know, motivational speeches or, or anything like that. Um, I think we're, we're motivated enough as a team, and, um, 
and you know, come tomorrow morning, we'll be ready to play. Tony Finau, thank you, sir, for being with us. Uh, have a great day and a great stay in Wisconsin. Thanks.